Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're going to talk about the new iPad Pro that was just announced on April 20th at Apple's event. Now, this is really interesting. Like, of course, we knew there was going to be a new iPad Pro, but what we didn't maybe know is that it was going to come with the M1 chip and basically have the same specs as the high-end M1 Max that are currently available. Now, Max right now with the M1 chip kind of have two different flavors depending on the Mac you're looking at. Uh, I have a MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip that has the 16 gigs of RAM with the eight core and all that good stuff. And then we also have uh, a couple of Mac minis with those same specs. Now those things are, they're performance monsters uh, for what they are. I mean, I had uh, last year a MacBook Pro 16 inch with the i9 fully spec'd out 64 gigabytes of RAM a, a $4,400 machine that basically performed about the same as a $1,300 MacBook Pro so with that said the performance of the M1 chip going into an iPad Pro makes me wonder whether or not the iPad Pro is going to finally deliver on that promise that it is a computer and not a fancy tablet. Now, of course, it's a, a tablet that's been kind of given the name to any sort of device that's kind of phone-like but larger but not an actual computer. And Apple was very much like the iPad is a computer, like please take it serious. And last year we kind of balked at that claim. Now, what I have right here is the iPad Pro from last year. I like to call this one the Pandemic Edition because they released a new iPad Pro around the same time that uh, the pandemic was starting to, to come into full effect. And so um, this device, though, I love it. This is the first large iPad Pro that I have bought. I always purchased the smaller one because I had a laptop. I didn't want an iPad Pro that was basically around the same size as my laptop. But with this iPad Pro being the 12.9 inch uh, you know, display, um, I started using it all the time. Adobe Lightroom, fantastic for editing photos. There's so many things that I can do on this iPad. And then of course, with it being connected to cellular all the time, it just makes it a great device for me to grab and go with, especially when I don't need the high performance of a laptop. But now that the iPad Pro is gonna come with the M1 chip and have essentially the same specs that you can get in the current versions of uh, the, the MacBook Pro and even the Mac Mini, and now of course, the iMac that was also announced, it, it begs the question, are they going to bring Mac OS to the iPad Pro? Now that's a huge, a huge potential in my opinion, because there are applications that, that creators use, that people use every day that are not available, that Apple has not brought to the iPad yet. Final Cut Pro, Apple has not brought a video editor to the iPad Pro yet other than iMovie. Of course, there's some good ones like LumaFusion, but no Final Cut Pro, no, no logic. None of their high-end applications have been brought to the iPad Pro. Now, iPad OS has always been kind of this OS in and of itself since they broke it away from iOS and made iPad OS. I believe iPad OS was a, a transition uh, to Mac OS coming to the iPad Pro. Now, if Mac OS comes to the iPad Pro, that means we have native support of applications on our iPad that typically would only be available on the Mac, making the iPad Pro a computer. Now, of course, with the new M1 chip, there is also apps coming to our computers. They announced that last year when they talked about the new M1 chip that we'll be able to run apps like that typically would be maybe for a smartphone or for a tablet on our Mac, which is awesome. So we're seeing a lot of convergence happening from both sides here, and I think it's all a precursor to the iPad Pro getting Mac OS. The iPad Pro doesn't really need, if it's gonna continue with iPad OS, doesn't really need more performance than it already has. It's a beast as it is already and does amazing things. But now with the iPad Pro coming with the M1 chip, I'm a firm believer in the fact that Mac OS or a expanded version of iPad OS that is very much closer to Mac OS that offers native support for desktop style applications will come to the iPad. 
Surface with the Microsoft, so their Surface Pro has been popular because you can install applications that are desktop type applications on a Surface Pro and utilize it out in, in the world like a tablet. Very convenient because of the form factor and all of that stuff. If Apple brings desktop app support to the iPad Pro, then I think that puts kind of a nail in the coffin. The only reason that you would buy a Surface Pro device anymore is if you need it for software support that only works on Microsoft. Uh, and I, I don't know, I feel like Apple is working towards saying, you know, we need a touch device, we already have one, and we're getting to the point where now we can give that to you with the added features. Even if you look at Mac OS in its current state, it's very touch friendly. If you look at the menu bar uh, items up in the top menu, they are very touch and slide friendly. Uh, even though we're using them right now with trackpads, they can very easily be utilized with a swipe down gesture, just like we would swipe down to get to our menus on our iPad Pro with the current model or even with our iPhones of the most current models. So in my opinion, and I don't know if it'll come this year or maybe it'll come next year, or it'll be a rollout that takes a couple of years, I believe that some form of either Mac OS is coming to the iPad or iPad OS is going to get desktop application support this year or next year, and I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. So with the iPad Pro, the new version, it has the same performance options that are available in the current versions of the Apple products that are running M1 chips. You get the ability to go up to two terabytes of storage. Why would you need that on a standard iPad? You wouldn't. They uh, added the uh, ability with the USB-C port to have Thunderbolt speeds. Why would you need Thunderbolt speeds if you weren't connecting external hard drives and stuff to it where you needed high bandwidth or a dongle type of adapter uh, device that would allow you to plug in multiple USB devices to your iPad? You wouldn't need that kind of throughput. Why would you need 5G? Well, I mean, everything's getting 5G. I guess that doesn't really matter. But with the Liquid Retina XDR display, I mean, that's an amazing thing that they're adding as well. But the biggest of all of that is why would you need the Apple M1 chip? Why couldn't they just stay on the current architecture that they had and keep going down that road and keep improving that like they probably will for the iPhone? I think it's because of desktop app support either coming to iPad OS or with the iPad Pro getting uh, Mac OS or something like that. I think that that's happening. Uh, it may not be this year, it may be next year, but it's gonna happen. We're getting desktop app support eventually to the iPad Pro and it's gonna be awesome. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you believe what I believe and think that that's what's probably coming? I think it's the most likely reason for M1 architecture inside of an iPad, but that's just my opinion. Let's talk about it down in the comment section below. Click that thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel so you could be notified when we put out new videos and I hope to see you in those. But until then, take care.